Welcome back to Real Surf Stories. Today, the California kid, Joey Buran. From surf and skate stoked Grom, to promising talent, to world tour pro surfer, to pipe master, to founder of the PSAA tour, to pastor, to family man, to dancer. The road was long and rocky, but it is an inspirational one that leads to glory. Joey's surfing life really got going in Carlsbad, California, where he and his childhood surf buddy David Barr surfed nonstop. That's how it was with Barr was key because when I went into seventh grade and he was in sixth grade, we would meet on Saturday mornings like at 4.30 in the morning Damn. between our two houses and we would skateboard to Tamarack in the dark. It was in that year, it was 73, that Wide World of Sports had the Pipe Masters on TV. So Jerry Lopez won it. And so I'm like, Mom, I'm going to win the Pipe Masters. Like, sure, Joe. No, I'm going to win the Pipe Masters. I'm going to win that contest. Like, I know I'm going to win that contest. David Barr and I would go down to La Paloma and watch the movies. I'll never forget Five Summer Stories, the first time we saw that La Paloma. I would sit there and they do like, all these movies had the 20 minutes of Jerry Lopez and Roy Russell at Pipe. It mesmerized you. And I'm just like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to win Pipeline. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. That's why I'm alive to win Pipeline. Dave was classic. So, like, he, we were so good for each other because no matter how annoying or obnoxious I was, he'd just be like, it's just Joey Baran. And we both had the same dream. And in 78, the tour was really getting traction. And that's how I ended up on the tour was 78. And I'm one of 36 competitors in the Pipe Masters. So my next heat is Rory Russell. This is my next heat. He's the two-time defending champion. And it's it's one in the afternoon, perfect sun, perfect east wind. No, it's like, it's, it's west. It's reeling. It's all-time pipe. And there's Rory Russell. And I'd already beaten Rory Russell at the Oceanside event. And he literally said to me, when you get to Hawaii, kid, you're going to get it. So I'm piling out, and Dan Merkel looks at me and goes, I can't believe you got through your heat. What a joke. I don't know, when, when Dan Merkel did that to me, I was like, I was like, I'm going to win the Pipe Masters. I'm Joey Baran. This, this is what I live for. I just go nuts. I go off. I go off. I had the 7-3 single fin that Manami made me. It could hold anything. I just went nuts. I got like a really good barrel, and then I just the, the switch flipped. And I was catching bombs and getting shocked. I'm in the biggest blue barrels of my life, getting spit out, and the beach is going nuts. So the six finalists were going to be Jerry Lopez, Rory Russell, and the hated Aussie that everyone hated, Larry Blair, who ended up winning. So I'm in the final. At Pipeline, I felt like I had the cheat sheet. I just felt like I had the code. Whenever I was serving a Pipeline, I just felt like I knew more. Guys that normally were better than me, I had, I would... It's like I own them at Pipe. The finals day was scary. Northwest, north wind, chunky, shallow. The kind of day people get hurt. I, I was like, oh man. And and it was it wasn't inviting Pipe. It's Larry Blair, Dane, Hans, and myself. We've checked in. All of a sudden you just feel it's like this like a disturbance in the force, like Star Wars. The whole beach changes. And you almost feel like the whole beach is going like, oh. and here they come. Jerry and Rory together out the side gate from the Lightning Bolt house. King and Prince of Pipeline. The, two years before, I'm at the La Home with David Barr watching these guys, dreaming of being these guys. And here they come. The Legends, 1978. This is it. This is the Pipe Masters. All of it. Here it is. I was so overwhelmed when I saw them. So now it's, it's the only time in my career I ever started being Jerry Lopez was this final. I went and I was just like, it's on, it's on, man. I'm in the finals with Jerry Lopez and Roy Russell on Apple TV, it's on, I, this, this, I'm going for it. It was that moment and I understood the magnitude of the moment. I'm so glad when I look back that I hooted for Jerry Lopez in that final. And then I was so happy I didn't get last. Dane got last. When it was on national TV, Jim McKay said, there goes little Joy Brand, the California kid. Then, Surfer Magazine's like, we've got to do an interview on Joey Moran. And my world would be forever changed. I was a California kid. And I was going to be in all the magazines. And I pro surfing had come. California was on the rise. And I was the king. Sometimes I think it's funny. What people do that some people don't. And I hit the ground running. 
completely different than 78 or even the well, every year of the pipeline masters is its own story we all know that it's like its own book its own chronicle but in this in 84 there are some interesting things about 84 for me personally i already announced my retirement i'd announced that i was starting a new american tour the professional surfing association of america the psaa is was the name of that tour then it became the bud tour and i had a vision that in transitioning out of pro surfing, because now Aki, the, the Curran, Damien Hardman, and I could see the handwriting on the wall. So I'm going to be a event promoter. I had already had plans to start a new U.S. tour that I felt could be equal or better than the ASP World Tour. So everyone knew I was retiring. And I hadn't won the Pipe Masters. I hadn't won my dream. I hadn't done what I said I was going to do. So for me, I'm on my way out. I'm a kindness promoter, but I'm still top 16 in the world. And... Pipe Masters is going to be my final event, like my signature event. Well, there was one day that was going to be the day, and it was December 17th. It was a big northwest, it was a combo west-northwest, really big, you know, outer Pupakea, third reef pipe. So they had the event in one day. You could tell it was huge. And uh, Sean Thompson, Randy Rarick still talk about this. I had a Walkman. We had Walkmans back then, and I was dancing on the beach. About 7 o'clock, that first light's there. Contest is on. It's huge. This is it. It's big. They're not waiting for the next day when it's dropping down. They're going now. The swell's still building. The winds are good. They're north trades. You know, they're not bad north winds. They're not east winds. They're kind of that north trade that kind of goes like this. There are some clean west sets, but it's so thick. It's thick. It's doubled up. It's a combo swell. And contest is on. I had three boards in my quiver that day. I had a 6 9 single fin a 7-3 single fin, and a 7-10 single fin, all Glenmanamis. So I'm the last guy to win the Pipe Masters on a single fin because these boards were made like in 80-81 before thrusters came in. So I've got 
John Dom, who's an all-time pipe specialist like Brian Buckley, Goofy Foot. Mm -hmm. I've got Marvin Foster, who I'm really good friends with, whose pipe strategy is very similar to mine. And I got Sean Thompson, the world champion, Pipe Masters champion. You know Sean and John Dom are going to go deeper, deeper main peak. And you know Marvin and I are going to look for swingers, the chipper swingers, and come under deep peak. I never like to be too deep. At pipe, I like, because you get these shifters that swing. So you had to time your paddle out more seriously than a normal big day at Pipeline. And Marvin and I paddle out together. I always remember it was with Marvin. We got out there and then we barely got through the super gnarly AU Kai dredge. And we're like catching our breath. We're like, wow, it's so heavy. Like it's so big, it's so heavy. Sun was out, that was good. But it's so big and it's so heavy. And you're just looking toward rock piles, the second reef, it's just, just monsters just marching down the beach. Like outside Pupakea. So heavy, I gotta win this contest today. I gotta win this contest. So we're in the channel. We get to the channel pipe. I can never remember this happening ever another time in my life. A set came so big from Third Reef as a total washout through the main, through pipeline channel. So I win that heat, Thompson gets second. Then I'm in, now here's where it gets gnarly. My second heat was Aki, Alan Byrne, who'd gotten second in 81 when Simon won on the thruster, and Brian Buckley. So I got Aki in this heat, it's his first Pipe Masters, and he's in, he's in this heat. And then Buckley, who probably knows Pipeline as good or better than anyone on the planet at this time, because he served a lot of Pipeline all year long. Definitely exciting. I think I'm ready for it, so you can get a good barrel and live through it. You ride surf this big very often? Uh, whenever I'm in Hawaii, this is a regular thing. Uh, it's a little more out of control than usual. But I guess that's what separates us. Uh, see who's going to get the mean ones. Now I just hope I get the, get the right ways and don't get taught, caught too much. A couple of boards have been broken already, so I don't really want that to happen. Do you ride waves this big very often? No, not at home. Only when we come here. It's so like just about everybody. You know, you only hit it one time a year. But it's worth it. You only need it that one time. <laughs> okay, thanks. After a while, the rain clouds break down. Okay. So, okay. But I uh, believe in God. <laughs> This is the first day he's working big waves of the pipe. 
у нас слово Ян Сапа, Папа Подлавик. Брайан Болтвей. But I'm, I'm, we're kind of going or like a bumper car, you know? Like I've got inside. So you just came. The average person could never even relate to this. But we're on seven, ten boards, and we're kind of, our elbows are hitting. But I've got inside. But I hold inside. I'm as deep as I'd ever want to be at pipeline. And I whip around. And I basically almost airdropped this super late drop. Came down, I just got this incredible barrel and I kissed the sky when I came out of the barrel. That wave guaranteed me to make the finals. Then I, the heat was over and I won. At the finals will be Tommy Carroll, all the way from Australia, wearing black will be Max Medeiros, he's right here from Hawaii. Wearing green, Derek Hall, Hawaii. Wearing a yellow shirt, Ryan yeah. Bartholomew yeah. from Australia. Wearing a blue shirt will be Joy Moran of California and wearing pink Mark Ogilupo of Australia. Those are the six finalists in the Offshore Masters. That year, Offshore Daystar, which is a huge company in the surf industry in 84, was the Pipe Master's sponsor. Clothing companies, when they sponsor an event, they wanted you to wear their trunks in the contest. So the early pro surfers lobbied together, almost like the players' union, to fight against this but they couldn't stop it for this event. So all the competitors had to wear these trunks. Aki and these other guys wore their trunks inside out. You understand why they would do it, but it's just, this has a negative energy to it. When you agree to serve the Pipe Masters and you sign the contract as a competitor, you agreed to wear the trunks. In 1984, you're gonna give someone a trunks that say Offshore Masters. And it's 80s, right? It looks like the 80s, pink and white. And your trunks say competitor on the back. And I'm not going to say people didn't beat me in the Pipe Masters final because they wore the trunks inside out. But you just, there's just a little bit of negative energy to that, even though it's understandable. Carroll had a horrible wipeout at the beginning of this final and was never the same. He got last, he got sixth. Rabbit had opted to serve, he was trying to get these second reefs that would reform on the first reef. So he had the biggest waves, but they weren't barrels. So that's not gonna win the Pipe Masters. Max Medeiros was riding a super short board. I tell people, Max Medeiros, I'm still on a 7-10 single pin. I think Max was on like a 6-3. He was from Kauai, he was a Cannons guy. He got third that year, he got third the next year. Like Max Medeiros was a super gnarly pipe surfer. I saw him get a couple of waves. We're like, oh, those are good waves. You know, Max, Max is in this mix. And I knew Aki had had that one really good wave because the whole beach went crazy. But I didn't really see anything other than that. And then I saw Derek's detonation. 
Derek was informed, he looked like he could win that day. I'm winning the Pipe Masters. I knew I was having a good final. It was a good final, it was a clean final. I had, I had three good waves, but I didn't have a fourth one. But I'm winning the Pipe Masters. I'm pounding back out. I'm winning this final. So here's how it all ended. This is how it all came together. So Derek, I see that, I'm like, I'm winning the Pipe Masters. Oh my gosh, I'm winning the Pipe Masters. And all of a sudden, rainstorm number one comes. It comes over the hill at Pipeline, like right over the Lopez house. Like, comes over and it starts to rain, it's raining, and I'm pounding back out, and there's raindrops, right? You know, like, it's, 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 it's probably hard to catch waves when it's raining, but it's not a downpour yet. It's just, it's starting to come, the tropical rain, and the guys are a little farther out, and I'm kind of by the swinger chipper peak, and I'm pounding back out, and all of a sudden, like this, like about an eight foot face, nine foot face, west, clean west, they're too far out, comes right underneath them, comes right to me. Just, just right, it's like the field goal, like just a 35 yard field goal to put it away, right here. The two foot putt to win the US Open. I mean, this is it. This, I catch this barrel, it's if the rain's starting to come down, could do anything with my eyes closed. Just boom, boom, barrel, 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 barrel spit out, like a five five, you know? But it's the fourth wave. I was the only guy in the final that had four made barrels. So we get on the podium and they start doing, you know, sixth place is Carol, fifth is uh, uh, Derek Ho, and then fourth is Rabbit, third is Max Medeiros. So now it's me and Aki. And Carol's to my left and Aki's to my right. And they announce, da 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 da, Mark Acalupo! And everyone starts screaming. And, and I didn't know, and I was like, wait, 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 because if you see the video, I'm like, wait, wait, what just happened? And Tom Carroll was on my left, and Tom and I were always very close. I can't say this about hockey. <laughs> I mean, there's respect, but Tom and I were close. We did a lot of stuff together. He goes, Tom Carroll grabs me, and he just goes like this. He goes, he goes, you won, Mike, you won. Tom Carroll said, you won, Mike. That's when I knew. Dreams come true, man. Dreams come true. Two weeks ago, I had a dream that I was in the final, and I was halfway through the final, and I was winning, and I saw Derek Cole get a good tube. And in that final, when I was pounding out, and Derek Cole got that one tube that it came out of and got clipped at the end, it was the it was my dream right there. And when I had the dream, I woke up, and the dream wasn't finished. And now the dream's finished, man. I'm, I just thank God for this opportunity, and I'm I'm happy I can live this moment. Okay, let's give it to him, the champion. The king of the pipeline. I couldn't help but notice six guys on the podium, one of them was wearing the trunks right side out, and that was me. So I'll just put put that there. You can think about that, whatever you want, and how the universe works with karma, juju, or sowing and reaping. But for me, I'm really glad that I wore the trunks right side out. I had no reason not to. I understand why the others didn't, but it's worth noting, because there's Carol on my left, Aki on my right. I'm the pipe champion. You can think whatever you want. It's just a fact of the history. Uh, plus, I beat him in that final. So, trunks right out or inside out, it was my day. So, the key to winning the Pipe Masters final in 1984 was making four barrels. Big barrel, small barrel, four barrels. You get touchdown, field goal, touchdown, field goal. That's that's how I won the Pipe Masters. I had two touchdowns, two field goals. That's how I won. I won the Pipe Masters and all the media's there and all these people, they're screaming. And I'm doing interviews and all of a sudden, here comes rainstorm number two. This is where like my whole life changed because my book that's coming out is called Beyond the Dream. So I had the dream of winning the pipe, but I have a whole life beyond the dream, and it's both. Everyone leaves the beach. My whole life, why were the sports, 1973, uh, out of Tamarack on big days, pretending I'm suffering against Jerry Lopez. The final where Roy says you're gonna die. The final where the semis are burned and I both get detonated. The the final in 80 when Simon gives the wave to MR and MR wins. And it's, well, all of a sudden some hooey guy shows up, because. Randy and, and Fred, they hired the Huey, they worked the contest. This guy comes up and says, give me the trophy. Ho, ho, cuz, give me the trophy. Like, I've got this trophy and I think it's my trophy for winning the Pipe Masters. But it's kind of like your perpetual trophy. I don't get to keep it. So he takes the trophy and it's pouring rain and all of a sudden, like, suddenly no one's talking to me, no one's listening to me, and I'm standing in the rain and it's pouring and I'm literally by myself without my trophy. 15 minutes before, I'm king in the pipeline, holding the trophy, and everything I lived for my entire life has happened. And there's a few of the Hawaiian guys tearing down the scaffolding in the pouring rain. And I was like, that was it? 
And the thing most about it was as I was by myself, that I was alone. Basically, it was like what I was really thinking in the end was like, there has to be more to life than this. And so, so much of the rest of my life goes with trying to find purpose after that. And then come into a place of personal faith with the Lord. We did that. We lived our dream. Now we got to get to what's beyond the dream.